One process that almost all of us human beings go through in their lives is the process of finding our own voice. Early on, we learn to speak, to say mama, papa, our first sentence, write our first word, our first essay, and maybe eventually even write a book. We learn to have a conversation, how to listen, how to argue your own point. And some of us even learn how to express ourselves through some sort of creative process, acting, painting, dancing or music. Now it has become clear to me and I'm sure to many of you as well that in today's age, the age of the internet, expression, creation has changed. It has taken on a new dimension and it is no longer only about finding your own voice. It is now about finding your own voice online. Nathaniel Drew is by far my favorite YouTuber right now and he's recently launched an online course that talks you through the process of finding your voice online. Now you might think that a topic as abstract and complex as finding your voice online would be really difficult to teach in the form of virtual classes. And I agree with you. I was really hesitant and kind of curious to find out how Nathaniel would approach this difficult topic. And of course, like so many times before, Nathaniel has proven me wrong. And that's actually what I love most about his work. Because every time I watch one of his videos, I feel like I'm questioning and rethinking my own creative process the way I make videos myself. Of course, I absolutely inhaled Nathaniel's class and I thought it might be interesting for you to see what my learning experience looked like. So I documented me taking the course and I want to show you some of that in this video. And if you find it interesting, which I hope you do, then I would highly encourage you to also head over to Skillshare, which is the platform that Nathaniel is hosting the course on, and try the classes yourself because they're very individual to the viewer. So the questions that he's asking are very helpful, but only if you answer them yourself. Nobody can answer them for you. And they have really helped me bring some clarity into my own creative process. Now, I'm not going to go through Nathaniel's entire course because that's not my place to do and also it would extend this video into movie length. Instead, I would like to share my key learnings with you and my very own way of actioning them. So let's get started. A great place for all of us to start when it comes to finding our voice online is to address insecurities and limiting beliefs. Now, if you were to tell me that you've never felt insecure about something you've said or created and put online out there for any reason, then I wouldn't believe you. Limiting beliefs grow within us from the moment we exit childhood. And if we don't address them, they can really impact our freedom to create and to unleash our full potential. As Nathaniel suggests in his course, I'm going to write down what I think are my very own limiting beliefs. I'm not spontaneous. I'm not good at one thing. I'm good at many things, but I'm not really good at one thing. I'm selfish. I have to make the most out of my time. Looking at what I wrote down feels really liberating and right away I can counter argue some of my limiting beliefs. But I'm also realizing that it's not really about counter arguing them, but about accepting them and in that way, not allow them to limit you in any way. I might not be the most spontaneous person in the world, but I can be spontaneous if I have to. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to travel the world for the last three years living entirely location dependently without any securities, without a roof over my head. Well, I guess I had a roof over my head, but I didn't really have a home base, a place that I could come back to. And I guess that shows that I can be spontaneous if I have to or if I want to. I might not be an excellent painter, dancer, musician, but who even says that we have to be good at one thing? Why can't we be good at many things? And why can't the diversity of the tasks that we're able to do and able to do pretty well be our one thing that we're good at? Limiting beliefs are a huge topic and I'm definitely going to make another video about that because already I'm super excited about diving deeper into it and yeah, going deeper into my own limiting beliefs and see what I can find. I always knew that inspiration plays a big part in unleashing your full potential, but one really interesting point that Nathaniel made was that most of the inspiration that we need is already within us which means that sometimes we only have to go back in time to find it. In order to find our own voice, we have to go back to our childhood, back to our past self 
and that can be done by looking at old photos or old video footage. But we can also call our parents and ask them what we were like as kids. I asked my mom about this once and she said that I had a very strong will as a kid, which basically means that I was incredibly stubborn. I would lay down on the floor in the supermarket if I didn't get what I wanted. And I think that's still the case today. I have a very strong willpower if I set myself a goal in terms of exercising, in terms of eating healthy, in terms of work, then I would do everything to complete that goal. And I'm not saying that it's always a good thing. Sometimes too much discipline can harm your creative process, but it's definitely part of who I am, what defines me. And it also shows in a lot of my videos, especially the newer ones, that self-optimization is a reoccurring topic. But I also know from my dad that I've always loved storytelling. In fact, my brother and I, when we were kids, we would go to my dad and beg him to play rule plates with little Playmobil mannequins with us for hours at a time. So on the weekend, we would go up to his bedroom and be like, dad, can you play Playmobil with us? But I just remember the times where we would sit on this floor and have an entire playground full of Playmobil mannequins and just, yeah, make up role plays for hours. And I absolutely love that. It shows that I've always loved stories. I still do. I love stories in books. I love stories in movies. I love stories in videos and work in social media. I try to embed stories into all my work if I can. And it's not only a marketing strategy, it's also a personal interest in stories and how they can transform the information that you're trying to yeah, bring across. My point is, and I guess that was Nathaniel's idea as well, that our most valuable asset in terms of finding our own voice is to bring out what makes us unique. And to find that uniqueness, we often have to go back in time. We have to challenge ourselves and we have to move out of our comfort zone. Which brings me to my next and last key takeaway from Nathaniel's course. And that is that we need to break our own rules. Even though he stresses how important it is to have a core theme and to have a creative framework within which you can tie all your work together, it is equally important to step out of our comfort zone and to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. It's like trying an olive for the first time in 10 years because you know you always used to hate them as a kid. And the moment you put that little tiny olive in your mouth, you're like, wow, how could I have missed out on this flavor for the past 10 years? And from that day on, you love them and you can't get enough of them. In the end, and that's the most beautiful part, it's all about the process. In my mind, finding your own voice is not something that we achieve and then we're done. Our voice can change and we have to be open to that change, otherwise we lose our full potential or the opportunity to develop it further. What I find really interesting after learning all of that is that it seems like finding your voice online doesn't actually differ too much from finding your own voice without the online. The way Nathaniel presents it in his course, and I agree with that, is that it's all about unleashing your creative potential and about going back in time, about learning about yourself. And I think that's a very interesting perspective because social media suggests that we need to listen to our followers in order to gain momentum online. But if we were to follow Nathaniel's process in finding our own voice online, then it would be more about asking ourselves those questions, about going deeper into our own personality, about what we really want from life and about questioning ourselves every day. So I'm curious to hear what your opinion is on how much a creative process should be influenced by the person who is consuming the creative product. Do you think that a YouTube creator should be asking his audience what kind of videos they like, what they want to see more of, or should he be creating videos that he feels true about, that he feels authentic about, and that he wants to be creating. There's absolutely no right or wrong, so make sure to drop me your answers to this question in the comment box below. And I'm excited to hear what you as the audience have to say about this topic. If you are a creator or one in the making, then I hope you found this useful. I also hope that you head over to Skillshare and check out Nathaniel's course because it is really, really valuable for anyone who is starting out on YouTube, starting out on any creative platform and is struggling to find their voice online. And I can say that the questions Nathaniel is asking in his course have really helped me define my own creative process and I think it will change the way that I create and make videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching and for helping me find my own voice online. That would not be possible without you. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you again in one of the next videos. Bye for now and cheers from Berlin.